Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us for today's South Talk. I don't like the blues, race, place, and the backbeat of Black life. A conversation between Dr. Brian Foster and Zaire Love. Before I turn it over to Zaire and Brian, I would like to make a couple of announcements. I will follow up with this information in the chat toward the end of the event as well. Okay. First, today's talk will go until 1.15. If you need to drop to hop off early or at one o'clock like our normal time, feel free to do so. Okay. Second, we have two events next week. The first event is a part of our Visiting Documentarian series and is a partnership with the Oxford Film Festival. That event is Monday, April 5th at 6 p.m. It's a little different than any of our other South Talks. So let me explain it. It's a film screening that you will have access to the film beginning April 2nd, which is this Friday, through next Friday, April 9th. Okay. The film is Mossville by filmmaker Alexander Glustrom. Here's a little teaser about the film. Mossville, Louisiana is a shadow of its former self a community rich in natural resources and history, founded by formerly enslaved people where neighbors lived in harmony, insulated from the horrors of Jim Crow. Today, however, Mo Mossville no longer resembles the town it once was. Surrounded by 14 petrochemical plants, the community struggles to let go of their ancestral home. And at the center of it all is a man named Stacy Ryan. Stacy is 48 years old and a lifelong resident of Mossville. In the past 10 years, Stacy has lost both parents to cancer and seen the neighborhood he grew up, who he grew up in, excuse me, demolished to make way for Sassel's new multi-billion dollar project. The event on Monday, April 5th at 6 p.m. is a conversation between the filmmaker and Andy Harper, director of the Southern Documentary Project. The registration will grant you access to the film for one week and provide a link to join the conversation Monday evening, okay? Similar to the noon talks, this will be a webinar. So you can see the speakers, they can't see you. Wednesday, April 7th at noon, our South Talk is Southerly, how collaborative storytelling makes communities more resilient, healthy, and equitable with the online magazine's founder and editor-in-chief, Lindsay Gilpin. I will put all those, res excuse me, I will put those registration links in the chat for you um, in, a, in just a moment. Okay, now I would like to introduce today's facilitator for Q&A and who will be in conversation with Brian, Ms. Zaire Love. Zaire is an award-winning filmmaker, music maker, and writer whose mission is to honor, amplify, and archive the stories and voices of the Black South. Zaire is a graduate of Spelman College, where she received her bachelor's, Houston Baptist University, where she received her master's of education, and the University of Mississippi MFA in documentary expression. She ideates and creates through her studio, Creative Cornbread, and is currently the Southern Foodways Alliance's Pahakis filmmaker at the Center for the Study of Southern Culture. I am elated to call her colleague. Thank you, Zaire, for what I know will be a vibrant, engaging, truth-telling conversation between you and Brian. Now, let me figure out how to make her come back. All right. Z Love. What's up? How you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Look, okay. I just want to welcome the folks who are out there. I want to welcome y'all to the proverbial table where we will be nourished uh, by the meal that has been prepared for us by Dr. B. Brian Foster. And this meal is called, I Don't Like the Blues. Come right. on, metaphor. <laughs> Come on, metaphor. You see what, you see we about I, to eat. Yes. Race, <laughs> place, 
and the backbeat of Black life. And um, before we take part in that, I do want to introduce our chef right here and our honored guest uh, with a quick uh, bio. We know it's long, but I'm going to keep it short so we can get into this meal. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> So uh, Dr. B. Brian Foster is a writer and storyteller from Mississippi. He earned his PhD in sociology from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and currently works as assistant professor of sociology and Southern studies at the University of Mississippi. Foster also serves as co-editor of the journal Sociology of Race and Ethnicity and is the director of the Mississippi Hill Country Oral History Collective. Y'all put y'all hands together. Y'all work your hands together <laughs> for our show, uh, Dr. B. Brian Fox. How you doing? You know, I'm I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm I, I'm one shot in to the to to being vaccinated. It's it's getting warmer out. The days are longer. I feel hopeful. Um, I was I was gonna ask real quick. What's tell me about creative cornbread and then like how you doing too? Because I know I'm being rude, but like what's creative cornbread? I don't think I have heard that before. Okay, so that's the studio in which I'm going to be putting all of my work under. So instead of just Zaire a uh, Zaire Love Junk, we gonna put we gonna make it you know official with the production. <laughs> and so if people want to you know um, of course you know have a Zaire yeah joint they just go to creative cornbread and hopefully it'll be a like cultural center too for folks to like really get into what this black okay. is, you know yeah oh um, that's cool okay we'll uh it'll it that may come up again i i just jotted that down i hadn't i i don't think i had heard that name before how you doing though let me okay. let me show i got some home trends you doing all right i'm doing good i'm doing good i'm excited to have the conversation um and, and to talk about it, so I, I'm ready. I'm ready to eat because I'm hungry. You hungry? Let's go. Let's go. What you What you got for me? <laughs> so a lot of people, or some people, might not know that we actually traveled to Clarksdale and we were able to put some visuals to some of the 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 beautiful words, the beautiful and powerful words that you um wrote in "I Don't Like the Blues." So I just kind of want to start out. Um, the conversation with um, one of those short montages and then we can go ahead and get on in. Yeah. Okay. Cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to share my screen real fast. One second. Well, I'm like the blues. Got it wrong. I don't like the blues was about the rural black south telling. In the beginning. The blues was the rural black south knowing. Not liking the thing does not mean the thing is no longer a part of you or its essence apart from you. If a tree loses a limb, it loses a limb but stays a tree. And a boomerang should always come back. And the rural black south is the blues. They just don't like it like we think they used to. So that's, that's you. That's, That's you. me. Um, and you know, you you start without you started out saying you know you got it wrong, and that the rural black black South ain't just telling; they know, right? And then Miss Irene say, you know, she don't like the blues. You know, I I don't like the blues, and um, you say just because people don't necessarily like something doesn't mean that that ain't a part of them you know which i thought was very like profound yeah. and um i want you to talk more about um the conversations that you had with several of these folks in um clarksdale and how you came to the conclusion that they don't like the blues yeah i so let's just we'll see where this goes i i got to clarksdale not not thinking, not really wanting to write a blues book. 
Um, and literally, like, I did not want to write a book with blues in the title, a book that that implicated the blues in any kind of way. And then I started talking to folks and started listening with folks. And the blues seemed to always come up. Um, so I guess context for some folks, I was in 2014, I was a grad student at UNC Chapel Hill. I had I had some time and resources to do do a field project, like to do some field work. Uh, knew that I wanted to come back to Mississippi. I'm born and raised in Mississippi. Knew I wanted to come here to tell a Mississippi story. Ended up in Clarksdale. The story of getting to Clarksdale is, is longer than I really want to go into now, though I can talk more if you got some questions, Z. Um, and, and got to Clarksdale only knowing that I wanted to tell a Mississippi story, I guess, and also knowing that I didn't want to tell a blues story, which I would learn was like a contradiction. Um, you can't tell a Mississippi story. You can't tell a black Mississippi story, certainly without without talking in some way about the blues. Um, and and I think the thing that became clear to me, as, you know, as I talk with folks and spent more time with folks is that blues does a lot of work for black Southerners. Um, that when, when a lot of folks would talk about the blues, they would be talking about like different stuff sometimes at the same time. For some folks, blues was music. For some folks, blues was music and also lived experience. So think like identity. Uh, and then for, for, for everybody, like the blues was, you know, there, there, was, there was this awareness of what the blues had become in Clarksdale. So think like blues tourism, blues development. And in all of the different ways though, whether it's music or lived experience or blues development, the sentiment, the, the, the energy, if you will, um, with which folks talked, um, or I guess, you know, that, that kind of characterized how folks talked about the blues, the energy was similar. Um, and, it, and it was this, I don't like, or I'm not a blues per person, or I don't want, it was always sort of this, this reticence to, um, you know, to, to it, it, there, there, was, there, was, there was this ambivalence and tension in, in how people talked about the blues. And, um, and so that's how it, you know, it became, the project became a quest to understand what that was about. If, if, if the blues is supposed to be, if the blues is supposed to be this thing that, that is defining of black Southerners, of black Mississippi, of black Mississippi Delta, why people here from here talking about it like this? That, that became kind of the, the question that I was, that I was trying to answer. Um, and, and so, yeah, you know, you, you hear, you hear like you do from Miss Irene, I don't like the blues. It saddens me, which is her talking about the blues as, as a, as a memory, um, as a set of, of experiences that don't feel good to think about. Uh, and later in that conversation, she, she has all of this, she, she holds this sort of critical perspective about blues tourism in Clarksdale. Uh, and then you hear from you know, there's a, I'm, I, there, I, I eavesdropped um, on, on any number of conversations at, at a McDonald's in Clarksdale with this group of, this group of older black men would meet every morning, every single morning during the week, early hours, six o'clock, six thirty, seven o'clock. Um, they're there and, and they, and they're there, they dressed up, you know, Kango hat, um, you, the, the, the little sandals that look like they was, that they finna throw some meat on the grill. Um, you know, the jumpsuits and like all kind of. This is like their meetup spot where they would gossip and laugh and 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 oftentimes, you know, you would hear, um, you would hear mixed in there like this sentiment about the blues, um, and and, and the blues defined in all of these different ways. Again, blues as music, blues as lived experience, blues as development, and you would also hear importantly, you would also hear, um, kind of the argument that the book makes, which is that the way that folks, that black folks in Mississippi, black folks in the Delta think and talk about the blues is caught up. It's, it's, it's not just like, I don't like blues music. It's an epistemology. It's a way of making sense of the world. It's a way of navigating a set of challenges or opportunities. Right. Um, and, and so, so what I would also hear in, in, at the McDonald's, but also in all of these other conversations, um, were these claims about excuse me, were these claims about inequality and identity in black culture told through the blues, right? Told through the language of the blues. 
Um, but but blues understood to be like this this expansive thing that can hold a lot and do a lot. I don't remember the question that started that, but 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 that's that's kind of that's both the story of kind of how this became a blues project and a little bit about how I heard about the blues from folks on the ground. Right. And you answered that question because it was just like, tell me about all of the conversations that you had with them and like why they don't like the blues. Now, I'm going to go into like what Pooh Baby said um, <laughs> <laughs> and hard, make it easy. And then I'm going to then I'm going to hit to the I'm going to go to the back of the book. So you you keep me accountable. OK, so OK, in um, from the front to the back, from the front to the back, from the front to the back. go back, <laughs> you know. So um, Pooh Baby says, um, put it like this. And you already know when, when black folks say, <laughs> put it like this. <laughs> or, all the while, or mind you, that you about to get some tea. You know, you, yep. about, you about to get their real thoughts, their real like opinions, all of that. So, put it like this is like a moment of clarity. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain something Put it like this, I got it. Like I'm finna, you finna understand it. The, right. the way that I'm about, go ahead. Exactly, cause at this time I was beating around the bush, but put it like this. <laughs> and he says, put it like this, you're born here. You born here, you live here, you have been through the blues for real. I ain't just gotta play the blues. I don't have to, but how hard it is here, make it easy. Yeah. How you feel when you say it there? Like it's so hard here that playing the blues is just easy. Yeah, I'm the the way I think about it is, I mean, it's a microcosm. Pooh Baby, Pooh Baby is a young blues musician that that I came to know and and spend a pretty good amount of time with in Clarksdale, 2014, 2015, especially. Um, and and he would in in this conversation. He, you know, this this conversation happened on the sidewalk. Um, he was busking. He was playing his guitar. It it was it was a weekday. I think this was a Wednesday. Um, it was definitely in the middle of the week. I'm pretty sure it was a Wednesday. And 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 we're talking about any number of things. It was not a structured conversation. But yeah, he made this point. And and the way I think about it, or or one way that I'll talk about it today is just like as a microcosm of of black life in in america of black life in the south certainly of black life in the silk and in the mississippi delta um of of of, of dealing with of, of dealing with a difficult reality in in a way that has beauty um and 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 in a way that has like richness in a way that is sustaining blues music is like like have you you didn't listen to Bobby Blue Bland like you didn't like Define Bradley like Southern Soul like blues music is I don't know like it's it is this for me like this generative I don't listen to a lot of old style blues um but 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 the, you know the more contemporary sub style sub genres that I listen to like it's this sustaining and generative art like art practice. Um, crafted from from an impossible situation, crafted from a set of conditions that, um, you know, that at least from my perspective, humans should not have to have to deal with and try to survive. And and so you 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 hear you hear something like I don't just have to play the blues, um, but but living here make it easy, or you know, some such is is the quote. I just I just think about how so much of of black life in this place is is looking around at the at the challenges um looking around at a set of conditions that are difficult and and in your effort to survive and overcome and build a life and or a family and and dream and so forth um you 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 do it in a way that's artful and you do it in a way that um that like you know re that 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 breeds a sense of community and, and connectivity. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 how I think about it. And I try to always, you know, like the blues does. I try to always, you know, the blues is a is a beautiful art practice, but it's born of of racial domination. Like it's born of an ugly reality. And and so I try to to not 
and this is a part of like how I, you know, one of the critiques I have of like a lot of blues writing and blues scholarship is that is that it glorifies and centers the art practice without accounting for the context. Well, the context. And so I try to I try to do both, but then also I try not to be because one of my critiques of writing about Black life is that it's deficit oriented, where it foregrounds and centers the context, whether it's inequality or whatever, um, and then everything else is 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 an afterthought. So. Um, you know, it's a, I think it, I think the, the quote though, the quote though, like teases out this tension of, of art and beauty and, and spaces that are generative um, in a, you know, in a broader context of inequality, in a broader context that's, that's difficult and challenging. Exactly, because um, while reading it, I'm just like, yeah, I feel that a lot of the art that has been birthed um, well, I want to say a lot, but some of the significant art that has been birthed by Black folks, you know, especially Black folks in the South, has has been rooted in a way to express ourselves, you know, <laughs> um, and to like get away, to escape from what, you know, these systems, yeah. you know, have, have presented us. You know what I'm saying? The blues, you know, it's like, look, I, maybe I can't talk to this person and that person and maybe I don't have a therapist maybe I don't have you know all of these different you know systems of help but man if I can just use my my hands if I can stump my feet if I can play my harmonica and if I can just belt out you know some of these some of these grievances I have with life you know what I'm saying like that can maybe that'll push me through to you know to, to my life, to, to, to that newness, you know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely got that. And I'm so glad that in this book, you did talk about the blues, not just as a, um, a, a music form, but as what people really, <laughs> what people are really living because your enjoyment, the, the, the enjoy, what blues can be from like the uh -huh. white it's just like enjoyment. Ooh, that it's a lot of passion. It's a lot of soul. Ooh, how do you put their lyrics together? Ooh, they can play their guitar. Ooh, da da da. Not understanding that, yo, the the, the lyrics and and how we put that backbeat together comes from a lot of these um, systemic, a lot of systemic oppression. So I appreciate you for um, putting that in there. But I want to go to go go ahead. I see you. I was gonna ask you a question. So how do you, you, you know, honor amplify archive mm -hmm. is like your mission statement, right? And and a, a part of that by 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 virtue of the country's racial history, um, our black folks were introduced to this place, right, seventeenth century. 1619. I know there are other histories that place black people here before then, but but the original history is that we get here in 1619, and we didn't come here to. There, there's a quote that I forget uh, that, that that I cannot remember. Um, I don't remember where this quote comes from, but it's like they didn't bring us here to collect butterflies. Like they didn't bring us here to 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 play hopscotch. Like it's our entry into this place was was violence and plunder. Um, and, and so in some ways to deal with black life in any way, to write about or study or try to represent black life in any way means that that, that history of violence and plunder is, is always, you know, maybe just out of frame. It's always close though. How do you kind of weigh that in, in your art making where, where you want to center and, and privilege, you know, these stories, stories of the black South without without caricaturing you know without distorting people like the 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 everyday lives and experiences of, of of real people um but also without emphasizing the the you know without taking this kind of deficit oriented approach i just wonder how you think about that in your art making honestly i just have to tell the truth i have to just as a as a documentary filmmaker and even as a writer, like I just gotta tell that truth. And sometimes it's it it is it's it's bad. <laughs> you know, it's it's not favorable. It's not something that you can look at and really be like, 
or finish the film and, and, and be like, you know what? Beautiful, just excellent cinematography. Some of you don't, you know, come back and just be like, whew, that mm. was heavy. That was a lot because that's, that's our lives, right? I just want to do it justice by asking the questions, by also centering that person in their story, not trying to create one of my own, kind of like what you said. Go in, you know, thinking like, yo, I'm going, I'm going to tell this story and I'm going to tell it to the best of my ability. And then you get in there and poor baby, he he, he just blew up your whole spot, <laughs> you know? This, so this yeah. That, that made me think of that made me think of and I was in it, this was been in my first few weeks in Clarksdale, mm -hmm. summer 2014. Yeah. There was this Jewish attorney uh who that I met and I, I met him, I it had to be at this little coffee shop where I would where I would um where I would do writing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um uh, and I remember him asking me, this is this is the introductory conversation with him. He's like are there any good stories? I'm, I'm here looking for a story. He's from, he's from, I think he was from the Bay Area. I don't know if that's where he's born and raised, but he was coming to Clarksdale from the Bay Area. Um, and and he kept, you know, it, it, the language was always interesting to me. He, interesting to me. He was looking for a story, looking for a story. And and in a lot of ways, that, you know, that 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 right there, that dynamic is is a defining kind of feature of the blues tourism system in Clarksdale, where you have and then a lot of Delta towns, even beyond the kind of development perspective, where you got people, even like me, right? Like me included, who come in, people who are not from here, who come into this place, oftentimes looking for something, a story, T TFA folks, looking for something. Um, and, and one of the lessons that that I learned, and even that, I like that didn't feel good. I was a, I was a grad student, I didn't know nothing back then, but I, I knew that like, Okay, whatever this is, I don't want to be this person who is here looking for an interesting story. Um, but but that dynamic is it defines a lot of definitely defines like the blues kind of scene in Clarksdale and then a lot of Delta towns. Uh, and I just think you know it's it's um, th this is this is a critique that I have of, and I think this goes both ways of like blues scholarship, but also any like writing, any type of attention on, on black community life, where the interest is not a relationship with the place or the people, mm -hmm. but the, the, the interest is just a good story yeah. or, or something that will pop, something that will sell. Um, anyway, I could, I could go on. We, you were going to jump to the, I don't know if you got something there, you were going to jump to the back of the book. I'll jump to the back of the book, but I'm going a, I'm to a put a little something on this one real fast. Okay. That's what it is. Just like we don't, we don't want it. Like there has been so much of like packaging black life and like selling it and come people coming in to write books, people coming in to, um, you know, make films for their glory. You know, because where is the equity? You know, for these communities in which you come in and make your story and 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 make yourself great. You know, and you still leave that community in ruins. You know, there's nothing that you're putting back in there. And I'm just, I'm just thankful that we got folks like us and so many other people who are like, let's create the work. Let's put, let's put the spotlight on these folks because their stories deserve to be told. If it wasn't, you wouldn't be coming from the outside trying to trying to get it right but being able to like have make sure that these these communities also benefit from their stories as well you feel what i'm saying because clearly like like we go back to the book and i don't like the blues blues development got the talent of black folks we just ain't got the the, the resources and that's what we need because even what um in i forget what chapter but daddy people's I see what you did right there. You see what I did. I see what you did right there. Um, chapter one. Yeah. Okay. Chapter one. Um, Daddy Peoples is just like you know. I don't even have the basic needs. I done had a stroke, and they ain't tell me till five days later. And now I'm, I'm physically, you know, right. I, I could be much yep. much better than I was. You feel what I'm saying? So I get that. But we're gonna take it to the back of the book. Okay. To the back of the book. Okay. A book, um, A Spirit in the Dirt, The Dirty. 
and um I enjoyed so for for folks uh, a spirit in the, it's a it's a it's the methodological note at the end of the book where I I think I say at the beginning of of this part I say I've already told you what I found right so this is what comes in the main body of the book then I say here is what I did and so this is where I just kind of spell out what I did in that time from 2014 to to the very beginning of 2016 when I was living in Clarksdale and then from 2016 to 2019 when I was when I was visiting visiting a lot so so yeah this is this is from from there and um the name of it is you said it you said it's out here a spirit in the dirt a spirit in the dirty uh a methodological no okay go ahead that's a, I think that's enough context yes and so in the spirit of the dirt um Brian uh starts off and he's just like look <laughs> when I was eight or maybe 10, I had this fascination with dirt, okay? He used to bury things in, in the dirt, finding finding stuff and putting it in the dirt because of this whole thing about you feeling like a, a genie was right there. Is that so, okay. Now, everybody has seen Aladdin, right? You've seen Aladdin. Mm -hmm. where, where does the genie come from? And there's a genie in Aladdin, right? This is the main character. Will Smith played him in, in the awful live action version. There's a genie, right? Where does the genie come from? Mm -hmm. Where did the genie comes out of something, right? What does the genie come out of? Okay. A lamp. Okay. Where did where did the lamp come from? Okay. Ground. Okay. I used, so this is me. I'm thinking that if you put something, if you bury something, like you would, I literally, I mean, you know, I was eight, whatever it was, whenever, I don't know, whatever makes the time it work. And so but you, okay, go ahead. I had to defend my my. Whatever. No, but I thought it was. I thought it was genius. I said, okay, we 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 go, we going some right here. And then you said, you know, your pastor said that you know God made us from dirt, and Mississippi got dust, so that dust must be dirt. And you in the first thing, yeah, yeah. The first thing I thought about was like when we were young, and you know, you out running, and you go get in the tub. And then you get out the tub and you see that dirt <laughs> around it, around it. Rings. And you just like, yep. hmm, we are made of dirt. You feel what I'm saying? But I want to talk about um, your dirt epistemology and your dirt methodology and your dirty methods. You feel what I'm saying? Because you, you also say like yeah. how in your time, you know, at UNC, you know, you, was, you were using all of the language, all of the sociological jargon but yeah. by year four you was just like look i'm gonna get real here go the stories so tell us about the dirt epistemology and the dirt methodology and the dirt dirty methods that you use and, and why why you chose yeah. for this to be dirty so uh, epistemology methodology methods it's that's kind of the order too so this is just more context for people think epistemology first methodology method epistemology is like theory of knowledge theory theory of truth like how do we how do we what do we believe is knowable and what do we believe is required to prove it um for for researchers there's a there's a way to think about epistemology in our everyday lives but in 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 the realm of social science research, epistemology is like theory of knowledge, and that comes first. As a social scientist, what, what do I believe about the nature of truth, the truth of the social world? What do I think is required for me to tap into whatever that truth is? Epistemology informs methodology. Methodology is like the guidebook of what to actually do. So if I think that truth, like it really, it's, a, it's, it's like a... They, some things are socially constructed. That, that's a simple way to put it. My, that might that might mean that my methodology requires that I like go talk to people, that I spend time in out in the social world to get a sense of of this process of social construction. This is I'm butchering it, but I'm just trying to make the point. And then methods are like the things that you do, interviewing or observation or whatever, right? So epistemology, theory of knowledge informs what methodology or approach you take, which dictates the methods or the techniques that you use. Grounded theory is, is, and this is still in, like this is still me with the social science hat on, 
grounded theory is kind of like an approach. It's kind of like an, a methodology wherein you listen to and you follow, you honor. This is a way to, to, to uh, you know, for, for a general audience to understand. You follow the things that are closest to the ground. So like conversations with people. That is, though, the, the conversations, what you hear from people, that informs what you do next. So if I'm in Clarksdale looking for a story about Mississippi and people talking a lot about the blues, I got to move toward the blues because the folks closest to the ground have dictated that. The same thing for like observation, right? What you see in, in, in from day to day, from Monday to Tuesday to whatever, informs what you do next uh, is one way to think about grounded theory. Uh, and so as an ethnographer, uh, someone who who is who watches and listens and talks to folks as a way to tap into truth um, as a as an ethnographer who who is like as a grounded theory ethnographer as an ethnographer who who abides by the like dictates of grounded theory uh, for me dirt is a way to 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 get at that idea in kind of a clever wordplay yeah. right. A, 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 a dirty epistemology in dirty methods or dirt epistemology in dirty methods is is leaning into this idea of grounded theory of of only pledging allegiance to the communities the people what is on the ground not being led by theory not being led by be, you know this search for a good story but being led by what you hear being led by what you see and again, being led by what is closest to the ground. It, it was also, though, like a call for practicality. This idea of, of, of dirt epistemology and dirty methods is a call for, for, practic for, for, for practicality and pragmatism. I wanted to write a book that was rooted in, in people's everyday lived experiences. It's why you get a lot in terms of names and stories and places in the main part of the book. And you get the you get the academies, you get the jargon, and and me situating myself in the literature toward the back. It's it was a call for producing something with practical value that people, you know, that 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 everyday folks, if you will, would read and could could take something from. Um, and then it was lastly this call for again this idea of dirt of a dirt epistemology and dirty methods. Like it was it was a call to home a call back to the country south, a place that don't have dust, but that has dirt, right? The quote, the quote from Pastor is, is God made Adam from, from the dust. And, the pa and Pastor Matt go, the pastor of my church growing up go, like Mississippi, we ain't got like, it ain't got no dust. We might got some pollen. Some people are probably sneezing and sniffling now. Uh, but, but the place I grew up had dirt. And this was in response to, to your point about, um, you mentioned about like my time at UNC where I'm reading for a time I thought I was a, an education scholar. And so I'm reading lots about the experiences of students in schools. I'm reading school studies, school ethnographies. And I'm hearing about people in Chicago and Boston and New York, people in places with dust. The place that I grew up in had dirt. After school, we was playing, we was playing baseball in the yard. And if you fail, you got a grass stain on your, you know, or you, you, our basketball court, so forth and so on. And so it, this was a call to, to ethnographers, to people who study race, to return to the rural South, like to account for the experiences of people living in rural Southern contexts. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, there's a lot going on there. And then it's also like, there is this biographical component, right? I talk about when I was eight or maybe 10, I had the story, I thought things lived on the ground. I, you know, there's some bio, biographical components that come up elsewhere. Uh, and, and so this is also an intervention. If you read the, the prelude in the book, the beginning of the book, it's a lot of I, 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 I got it wrong, I this, I that. Um, and, you know, uh, I actually, I was about to, I was about to be shady, but I'm not gonna be shady. The, the, I, a part of the I, a part of what that's purpose is, and, and a part of what I'm doing there, and the same, piece, the same thing that I do in the back, in some of the back matter of the book is to say that the, that, that the perspective of the researcher or the writer or the storyteller belongs in the story, belongs in the work. It's not something to be controlled away. It's not something to shy away from, but something to lean into. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, 
all, all of that commentary is kind of baked into, into both just the general idea, like dirt epistemology and dirty methods. And then I do also get at it a lot, it kind of explicitly in, in that methodological note. Yeah, which I thought was, I ain't gonna lie, I thought it was, it was very clever. Like, and I, you put two in, you put two and two together, two and three together. And I was just like, okay, I, I, I like that. I like that. And and you also, like, at the beginning, you was just like a caught spirit holler. And then at the end of it, you say, uh, I don't like the blues is the holler. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Before, you, before, oh. before you you give us that, I want to sh- um, show uh, another short little montage. Good. Mm-hmm. Really good. For people to see a little bit of Clarksdale and then I want you to answer the question or just tell us a little bit yeah about, you know okay in the, in the dust okay or in the dirt okay give me one second I'm gonna share my screen the task of ethnography is to offer a rendering of life in the place. Yeah, you got some research questions perhaps that motivate your, where you go and what you, what you kind of are attuned to. But I think the task of ethnography is to offer a rendering of life in the place. Not the rendering that you want to offer, not the story that you want to tell, but the story that is there. And your job as a sociologist is to maybe add some context is maybe to to offer an interpretation of what you see and what you hear and what you experience. And so I think I had just get, like the I got it wrong part was like I had got out my lane looking for a story to tell as opposed to allowing the stories that are here to be told by the folks who have lived. Them. OK, so now we want to hear about uh a caught spirit holler and I don't like the blues is the holler. Break that down for us. Just, just, you know, um, it's a part of what, a part of what I don't like the blues is asking the book. A part of what the book is asking people to do is listen. Um, and, and some of that again is wordplay and some of that is metaphorical. A lot of that is literal. Is, is literally listen to the people in this place, black folks in the rural South, listen to them. If you're interested in what's happening with black folks, if you're interested in, in you know, if you've got questions about race or racial inequality, if you want to see, you know, if you want insight about community development, if you listen to the folks, don't impose, don't, don't you know, don't bring in from the outside, listen to the folks who are there. Um, and, 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 and there are lessons, you know, that you will, that you will find. And, and yeah, I mean, the, the, I don't like the blues is the holler piece is, is, is me saying that I have collected stories from a lot of folks and, and, and I have tried to make sense of them and tried to offer to whoever buys and reads the book, um, or, you know, comes across the book in some other, in some other way. Uh, that, um, you know, I have, I have tried to offer to you, dear reader, um, kind of a framework for making sense of this collection of stories. The book is talking, the book is talking, uh, and, and yeah, you know, there are, there, there are all sorts of lessons, lessons for sociologists, methodologists, for writers, for for people in general. Um, there are lessons to be, to be gleaned if we listen. Yeah. And you've done some great listening because, you know, what you say, um, what is 185, you know, on the record interviews, 131 uh, folks, like Black folks that you, like, you know, talk to, and, you know, that's five years and, what, 26 days of of kind of research. Like, so you've, you've, you've been in the mix to, to, to be, um, to, to be talking about this but I, yeah. of course I, I want to go into that but I, I really want to talk about your process because I know that you know time oh. 
lessons, but we often talk about like language. We also talk about like how that is a, a much a part of the story as as anything else. You know, um, some publications don't, don't want you to put the ain'ts, the double negatives, don't want you to pause. Yeah. But that's just that captures what black life is, especially in the South. You 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 feel what I'm saying? Like that's, yeah. that does not dictate whether that should be like praised or if it should be like dismissed or anything that's just who we are you know that that does not discredit yeah. our intelligence or what we offer to the world so i wanted to to just thank you one for putting that language in there right but also i want you to talk about why that's so important um as your work you know in your work as a social hold on as a writer as an ethnographer as a sociologist, like, why is that so important? Yeah. Um, yeah, I to to that question directly. It's to me, it it, it ain't even that special. Like, I don't, I don't, it ain't. This ain't gonna be no good answer. Um, the the task of the ethnographer is to is to 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 capture and collect, and then offer a rendering of life in a place. What is happening with the people in the place? Um, you know, I'm going to repeat some of the things from from the clip, right? Like, what's what? What are the people saying? What are they? Uh, and for me, to to do that in a rural South Black place or a rural Black South place like Clarksdale, that means that in addition to painting the scenes, building the world. That's why we go to a funeral home and to a church and to a porch and to pick up basketball game and keep going blues festival. Um, but it's also to get the language right. If somebody say ain't, that means they say ain't. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the alternative to to putting that in. Um, if I say ain't, you know, there's a line in the book. I say, you know, this is this is you know, I'm building out the the kind of I'm making the case for why. An ethnography for the rural, of, uh, an ethnography of the rural South is is needed in the discipline, um, and I say like studying the, the the South ain't been done enough or something like that, and 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 from like like from my perspective, if that's how I talk, then I don't see the alternative. Like I know I know I know spoken word ain't the same type of communication as 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 writing, but I just think that there's like for me there is. Or I'll just say there's something. I'll let people be the judge. I think there's something in forcing folks. It's why it's why the names of folks are what they are. Pooh Baby and Darlene. Not Darlene, but Darlene. Miss Catherine, not Miss Catherine. Because that's how we talk. And, and I think that there is something in forcing, um, you know, oh dear reader, to have to bend their tongues in the way that 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 Black folks do in this place. Again, the task of ethnography is to capture, collect, and then offer a rendering of life in this place. I think that's what the book should feels like, should, should, should feel like. Um, as far as process, you know, the, what I'll say is, I, I think I'll say two things. I know we're getting up on, you know, kind of on time. I don't know if we want to jump to the q and I'm following you, you, so we can wait, you know, 10 more minutes to the Q&A if you want to. But, but two things I'll say about, about process. One is that this version of the story, the book, you know, is probably the third iteration of, of the I Don't Like the Blues story. There was a dissertation, which is, which resembles what the book is, but it's, it's different. Like the, the, the story has covered quite a lot of ground since the dissertation. Um, and then there's like the in-between of dissertation to book where there's there's probably two chapters. There's as much there's as much text that's not in the book that's on the cutting room floor, so to speak, um, as there is that is in the book. The book was twice as long, um, you know, as recently as I think it was maybe five weeks before I, I hit sin for that last time. It was twice as long. I cut so much, so much out. Um, and and so so I'll just say that that like that that, that this is probably the third iteration of the I don't like the blue story uh, and. And then as far as the process of kind of like what made it in and, 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 and what, what isn't there, I could tell this same story with all different people in all different places. Um, but what I wanted was representativeness. I wanted the, the, the people that are, are um, that, that folks meet in the book, I wanted that to reflect 
the people that I met in terms of me mostly talking to older folks, me talking to slightly more women than men, me talking to more native residents than long-term residents than so forth and so on. Uh, but then I also wanted representativeness in terms of like the, the context that people live in. Um, and so, so, you know, one of the, one of the moves of the qualitative researcher is to, is to do their interviews, get all of the interview transcripts and then, okay, oh, I'm gonna use this quote. This is a good quote. I'm gonna use this quote. This is a good quote. Like for me, it's in quotes are like, I, I think that there is, is a degree of irresponsibility. I, that's probably a better, is that a word? Irresponsibility? Uh, it's it. irresponsible. I'm just, uh, 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 to, 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 to extract a line or two from the broader context of a conversation and then to extract the conversation from the broader context of the place that it happens in. Uh, and so it was important for me to represent the types of places that, that life was happening and where I was spending my time. Again, is why we start in a funeral home and we end with me walking away from a blues festival and in between we go to church and on the porch and so forth and so on. Uh, the pro a lot of the process for me was about not just getting, not just, you know, refining the sort of theoretical framework, making sure the backbeat idea made sense or, or trying to discern the patterns that are jumping out that are most prominent. Uh, a lot of process for me was about making sure the book captured you know that the five years and 26 days and 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 all them people and you know more people than that and more stories than that to pull from the book that's what i could talk about process for the rest of the time today and you know for two more days but those are a couple of things i wanted to tease out we can um you want to you want to see what the question some of the questions are what you want to do i know we got like what I guess we got like 20 more minutes yeah we got yeah we got a little <clears throat> we got a little bit more time um and, and for folks at the table, I, I know <laughs> we eating and we food. come on metaphor. Yeah, you better re you better return to the metaphor. You you see what I'm doing? So if y'all have if y'all want to say something in the conversation that we having at the table, please make sure that you put it in the Q and A box. Um, uh, as Brian said, like of course he's talked to so many people, and and when you read uh. I don't like the blues, you'll be introduced to a lot of folks, right? Um, Pooh Baby, Dottie, you know, Dottie Peoples, Eddie Kane Jr. Um, and somebody that I like, Pastor Early. Um, Pastor Early, yes. We actually got a, I don't know, if we, you know, we got a little something from the church. So we're going to just show that. But while we show that, if you do have some questions, please put it in the chat. And after that, you know, we might, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, Past the early in his section, and then we're gonna get to these questions. Is that all right? Okay, big. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. To that land. It was the night after the juke joint show at T-Bones Blues Club, and I was at Boys' Mama's Church, sweating and clapping as the choir and congregation sang in unison, come and go to that land where I'm bound. Boys had asked me to come with him to the closing night of spring revival services for the week. Don't you want to go to that land? I was glad that I had come. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The pastor recited a scripture from memory then compel folks to clap and sing, come and go to that land. Folks clapped and sang, I want to go to that land. The song was as spirited as it is prophetic. Black Americans have always been coming and going, searching for places to be free, safe, and black since Europe's enslavement and colonization of Africa. Coming and going or moving and resettling are integral ingredients in the Black American story. Lord, we need to hear from heaven. So that was church. Uh, did you want to talk more about Pastor Early, or um, you want to get to these questions? Let's 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 jump to questions. Okay. Just for you know, just because I know some people are going to run at one, and I'm sure people have probably started to trickle out already. So maybe we can do some questions, and then 
a little after one. If we're going to go to 115, um, then we can kind of wrap back to the, the more conversational part. But let's, yeah, let's do some questions. Okay. Um, so Jennifer says, uh, I totally agree about telling the story that is presented itself to be told. In Dan's ethnology, we are told the observer changes the place and are advised to be as invisible as possible. So as the observer, you don't change the place. Am I understanding you correctly in that your point of view is to lean into the fact that the observer is an outsider and allow that to be a part of the story? Yeah, I think, I think, um, you know, the, the, in, in some ways, yes. In some ways, yes. Um, we are outsiders. Like, that's true. Ain't no way around it. Um, and, and I think we do us, I do, we do ourselves. I think we do the method uh, a disservice. I think we do the communities a disservice by pretending like we something else. Um, and, or, or by, by, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a book, um, a book that I love where, where the, the, the ethnographer, the writer, like leaves out some details about their presence in, in some of the scenes. And it makes sense for how the book is written. Um, but you know, at least from, from, from my, from my perspective, that's just something I would never feel comfortable doing. Like I was there, like I was over there on the couch or I was sitting there at the, t um, and, 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 and our presence does matter. I mean, you know, if, if the longer you, the, the more time you spend in the place, like you, you know, there you, it's, it's, it's penetration. Like the more immersed you are in the place, you know, the less reactivity there is there, the less, you know, uh, uh, the you you'll get less of folks altering their behaviors because of your presence um but but the bottom line is the bottom line is that and that is that we are that is that we are outsiders and so in some ways that is what i'm saying the point that i was that i'm that i'm making the loudest um especially the way i talk about it in in the book though is is that my like like the 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 researcher's perspective like the fact that there is no such thing as a blank slate um like whereas whereas conventional thinking in the discipline is that that bias uh is something to be controlled away or quieted i think it's something that can be harnessed to serve the work um and and so that's kind of the point I could I could ramble more, but like let's let's maybe try to get a couple more before. Yeah, this goes into what you were just saying. So maybe you can just elaborate. So this person is an ethnographic um, researcher, and they want to know how do you balance removing yourself or getting out of the way to let the lived experience speak for themselves? Because you're there, right? You you acknowledge it, that you're there, but you kind of out the way, you letting it happen. Um, yet select what you share slash publish and then how do you organize this so what's that process oh oh that's a big question okay um i wasn't expecting the last part so the the first question so read the first part again about um so how do you i know this is clunky but just read this no, no problem. So how do you balance removing yourself, getting out of the way to let the lived experience speak for themselves and yet select what you share or publish and how do you organize it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, it starts writing is, I guess I, I don't want to say writing is this, I want to include a whole bunch of thing under the umbrella and call it writing. But but to me, writing ethnography starts way before you get to the point of, of a book. Or, or anything like that that will be shared publicly. Like it starts with field notes and, and you know, the, those notes that you take when you are out and about and, and you're trying to capture what you see. It, it starts at that point. It starts with interview transcription, how you are rendering this conversation on the page. Because ultimately when you get to the point of data analysis where, you, where you're trying to make sense of the reality that you have hopefully captured, when you get to the point of data analysis, that's what that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with word documents. 
that go into a qualitative, you know, whatever, whatever data analysis software you use. Uh, and so I think it's, it's absolutely essential. This is, you know, if, if any of my of, or history students are here, you know, this is why I, I talk so much about um, and put a lot of attention on transcription, because I think that is the, the very early parts of, of writing ethnography. Um, and so I think that like my goal is to, I, I want to, my goal is to build a relationship with a place and the people. There are tools that I use to do that, being out and about talking to people, so forth and so on. And I want to collect all as much of the, the evidence of that as possible. All, field notes and, and other types of, of materials from the field and then interview transcripts, so forth and so on. So that when I get to the point where I'm writing something that will be public, there is a whole world that I have in my in in the data, like the world of Clarksdale in Cahoma County past and present is here. And so and, and then you get to the point where you're trying to make sense of of, of all of what is here. And, and for me, and I don't like the blues, this is where, OK, we got blues here and they talk and, and they're using blues in a lot of different ways. Blues as music, as identity, lived experience, as development. This is where this idea of the backbeat as this analytic device to make sense of everything that I've heard and seen. But also as this device that it might be useful for social scientists or writers doing similar kind of work in other contexts. Right. So then you start to try and make sense of, of what's happening. Then you get to the point of, OK. And especially in terms of, of, of a book of the of writing a book, how do I in a couple hundred pages, because anything longer than that probably ain't gonna be read, you know, that's a, maybe a different conversation about the about the business, but um like in, in 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 a limited amount of space, I can't put all of the thousands and thousands of you know pages of field notes and transcripts in a book. And how do I represent this world that I that's present in the data? How do I represent that in a way that is representative, in a way that is true of all of this material that I have? Um, and then, you know, that's where, you know, the 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 that's that's researcher perspective. I think that starting a story with Miss Irene makes sense. And then wrapping back to her at the end makes sense. And, you know, having the port scene and the church scene, so forth and so on, you do, you know, there are there is some some. Um, like the, the, the epistemological privilege, um, Vardu would say, right? Like uh, the, the, the privilege that the researcher has of interpretation and representation, you know, there, there, are, there is some of that where, where I am deciding who is here and who isn't and, and where, what places are here and what, what places aren't. But to me, that, that is informed by, by representing the world that that is present in in all of the material. I keep gesturing behind me like my data is behind me, but I think y'all understand what I'm saying. It may. I, it's go ahead. We get so we got a few more questions. I really. I know. To, I was just ram, oh, rambling you, on no, and on. No, you good. She, you trying to give us the thera, You trying to give us the third. You trying to give us all the ingredients on how you whip this thing up. So I, I get. It's, it's <laughs> okay, but um, we got about um a few more questions that I really want to get to. Um, okay. Hey, Manda. Hey, hey, <laughs> what's up? Um, so she says, first, I'm definitely fed because this was a great conversation. I miss y'all. We miss y'all. We miss you oh. too. Um, how important is it to both of you to continue being Black, being you, while also creating this important Black work? Some people assimilate even with their creative work, but both of you share so much of our Black culture in your work, which is very important. I just want to know your thoughts because this work is so important. Thank you for that, uh, Jay. We miss you. <laughs> you why don't you answer? Um, for sure. Um, I, without giving a whole little testimony, because y'all know I'll tell y'all. Oh, I, fe I felt that too, that little, the pause at the beginning. You know, mm -hmm. um, but this is my life's work. Um, I've been, I feel like I sit at the feet of the Nina Simone's, the, the, the Toni Morrison's, the uh, Maya Angelou's, the, you, you from saying like, I really sit at their feet and I just want to create the, the work that inspired, create work that has inspired me. You, you from saying like, if, so that I could see, so that other folks, 
other young black folks from the South can see this work and be inspired to do the same. Um, I'm also inspired by my grandmother's, you know, stories and my granny, she might be out here in the audience, but it was her stories about my big mama that made me want to study the South because it it sounded, it's, it was very counter to what the narrative was. Like my grandmother didn't take no miss from white folks or black folks. And I was just like, hold on, I thought y'all was, hold. and so that sparked something in me to say, hey, something about this story is missing. And when I went to go look, I saw that, oh, there has been resistance. There has been, you know, creation. There has been all of these things. We just ain't, ain't put a camera to it. We just haven't went in and searched it. That It just hasn't been up front. So let me do my due diligence by doing that, by being one of the people who present the Black South in such a way. And so... I just gotta do that because I know that there are going to be black men and black women who come after me who need that same inspiration that the people that came before me gave me to do this work. Um, thank, I appreciate you sharing that. That's you know, ditto, ditto. I, I I will say a little bit. You know, I'm in my house, I'm surrounded by like the material culture of my family. I got old pictures. I got my grandmama's high school diploma, 1946. Uh, my dad's, the program for my daddy's high school graduation. Um, you know, in the, in, I'm, I'm in year two of this massive family photo archiving project. I, 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 my, my answer is pretty practical. I think that all we have, I think that all we have are our lives. Um, and there, to me, there's something that is beautiful and sobering um, and inspiring about a life lived. Uh, I was, this may have been on Twitter or something, but like somebody, it's, I don't know all of the details of, of or context of the story, but there was like a picture of this collection of pictures that somebody had found. The person who found them didn't know any of the people in the pictures and you just see people living life. You know, you see people, I think there may have been people like at a fair or something or people holding a, like the most practical and intimate and simple moments that define what life is. My work, my mission statement is just to capture that as it has been for black folks in the rural South. So that in, at some point after, um, there is a record that there were people here. Uh, and this is how they sound. This is how they sound. And these were the kind of, this, these were the worlds that they built. Uh, here are some tools that hopefully help you understand both of those things. What they said, how they sounded, and, and what their worlds look like. For me, that's what it's about. I, you know, I don't, I'm not super concerned with, I think this is, I mean, there, there, this is probably another conversation, but like the whole point about like assimilation, I think was the word and that kind of thing. That's not something that is front of mind when it comes to the art making. Like to me, I want to, I don't write fiction. Uh, I'm a sociologist. I'm a writer, but I am a sociologist. And so, you know, I tell stories of the world that we live in, that we're moving through. And um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, again, you know, I ain't is in the book because the people who I'm writing about say ain't and, and so forth and so on. Okay. So, yeah, I said that was going to be short, but it wouldn't. Go ahead. So we have a question, um, Mother Grace, um, Shout out to Martha Grace. She she does uh, pull a quote, but because of time, I'm just going to um, kind of just ask her question. So she says, the book seems to also make a good point about academia's um, relationship with people and places. I really loved it. You've spoken a lot about this point, but is there a way to make more people, both in communities and academia, comfortable interacting and sharing information via this methodology and storytelling. So g give this to us real, real fast. Everybody can't go everywhere. Am I louder? Am I too loud? You're louder. Everybody can't go everywhere. I think that there is, there are some communities that I will not go do work in because I don't think it is my place. I don't think that I belong. I think that's the thing to say, to say early is that, is that when it comes to academics doing community-based or oriented work, I think the first thing on the checklist is, am I the person to do this? 
And and sometimes, from my perspective, the answer to that is no. You should go do something else. Uh, but beyond that, I think I think I think another point to make early is about the way we think about this work, wherein you know so many grad students. One question that they have about doing qualitative work is how many interviews do I need? How long? How much time do I need to? And for me, that's the wrong question. To me, the question is, or the the task is relationship building with places and with people. And, and, and that should take however long it takes. I know that's not practical for grad students. And, and if any grad students know me, they know that I live in, in the practical. And I could talk about that in another context. But, but at least I think the starting point is that this kind of work, from my perspective, when done responsibly, starts with relationship building. Not with let me make sure I can get make sure I can do thirty interviews or you know I got to live in the place for a year and a half or whatever. Many people talk about the methodological scope of I don't like the blues. The reason that there's a methodological note is because one of the reviewers asked for it, um, and and if I'm gonna do it, I said I'm gonna do it and give you everything. But like to me, I don't think about it as like this massive methodological undertaking. People talk about the number of people I talk to, interviews, whatever. For me, what I did in Clarksdale was come to know a place and, and come then, to know people in the place. Go ahead. And then this, because we got three more minutes. I need you to answer this one last question and then we're gonna okay. wrap. Um, okay. Um, and, and it, it it really just feeds into what you were just saying. So um, Linda says, um, did you see or hear vastly different opinions about blues as lived experience, as music and et cetera, a, among young and older black folk that you interviewed, like maybe somebody born in 1960 versus 1990? So was there- yeah. Was it? Yes, yeah, yeah. You definitely, older folks, you definitely hear more, um, like more of the language of the blues as lived experience and a more intimate knowledge of blues music in particular. Younger folks, the blues is this distant thing. Blues music is this distant thing. There, there is an awareness of, of the blues as a black cultural form and of blues tourism as this thing that dominates the landscape and environment in Clarksdale, but it's a little distant. The last point I'll make, cause I saw, I know there's a, a question about rap music. What, what, what young folks are saying in Clarksdale is the blues too though, right? Like the blues is a method. It's a method of sense making. It's a way of orienting yourself to the world. Um, soul is blues, R&B is blues, Cardi B is blues, trap is blues, in that it is a method of a particular group of folks, Black Americans, trying to make sense of a particular lived experience, the American racial project. And so black, young folks in Clarksdale don't talk about the blues in the same way as older folks, um, but what they talk in is blues too. That, that was a great wrap up, y'all. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. B. Brian Foster. And thank you all so much out there who came to yeah. this uh, dinner, to, to this lunch, to, to be fed um, in such a way. I hope that you all were nourished. I hope that you all um, really take some leftovers by going and get the book, you know, on Amazon or, you know, put it in your Googles and Google will tell you all the places that you can go and get this book. Um, I don't like the blues, race, place, and the backbeat of Black life. Um, thank you so much for coming yeah. and B, thank you all, as always for, for, for giving us the word. Thank, thank, thank you all for coming. Afton, thanks for, for your work organizing, facilitating this and all of the South Talks. Um, and Z, yeah, thank you. Thank you for, I enjoyed this. You know, I've done a hundred of these kind of book events at this point. Um, and, and you know, this, this might've been my favorite one. This might've been the most enjoyable one. So, so thank you for the questions. And, <laughs> um, you know, we could talk for another hour, I, you know, and I would, I would have just- you know, But you know, we can though. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you, Thank you both. Have a good afternoon. Bye, y'all.